What's going on guys? My name is Hussein and I have talked about stateless versus stateful protocols uh, here on this channel many, many times. Uh, stateless protocols such as HTTP have advantages and disadvantages, uh, mainly is horizontal scalability, but the problem is uh, local cache uh, cannot be stored as easily, so we kind of suffer of that cache locality problem as and the performance versus the stateful protocol, which is great for cache locality. You have the same information on the same host machine container. However, it doesn't scale horizontally as, as good, right? Now we talked about that stuff. So we need both. We need stateless and stateful protocol. Stateful protocol, TCP, gRPC, WebSocket, stateless is HTTP, right? So guys, we build application and build protocols kind of on top of each other. So for example, HTTP, yeah, it is a stateless protocol, but is built on top of a stateful protocol. And that's very easy to do, right? The protocol semantics of HTTP says, hey, do not store anything on the server. If the client needs information that is being stored on the server, then you have to transmit this information, transmit this state, state transfer rest, right? Uh, with every request so that we do not uh, suffer from uh, the scalability problem. We need to be stateless with every request. So that's the semantics of HTTP. It was designed because of the web. It was designed because we could hit any server and being served by that server. Okay, so it, this protocol, which is stateless, was built on a stateful protocol, which is TCP, right? For, for the longest time. I know HTTP3 is built on UDP, but it's a different question. I'm going to get to that. So TCP is stateful and it stores state. So it's very, very, you know, very, very well known for state, right? Because it, first of all, there is a connection. There is a physical connection. And second, we store sequence numbers on, right? We store window sizes. So we cannot all of a sudden decide, nah, I wanna go to another host, mid connection. No, it doesn't work, right? And the advantage of that is you can safely store data in the same host and, and guarantee it's gonna be there because the internet is gonna route you all the way to the same host all the time. Okay, so that's the, the trick. Uh, for, for stateful versus stateless. And you can build stateless protocol on top of stateful, as I said, HTTP over TCP. You can also build stateful protocols over stateless protocols. That's just easily just store states. Example, WebSockets, right? WebSockets is a bad example because it just uses it or reuses the same TCP connection, so it just downgrades itself, but Never remember this, it is, it is stateful protocol on top of HTTP because that's the first thing that we built. So another example is gRPC. gRPC is a stateful protocol, you agree, right? <laughs> and it's built on top of HTTP2, which is stateless protocol, which is built on top of TCP, which is stateful protocol, right? So all of this stuff, guys, Right. There's all like turtles on turtles when it comes to this. And, and my favorite is actually HTTP3, which is a stateless protocol, which is built on top of Quick, right? Which is actually a stateful protocol, which is built on top of UDP. UDP is what? Stateless protocol, right? We talked about UDP versus TCP. Check out the video here, right? Which is built on another UDP, which is a stateless protocol. So at some point, you you have to think the, these guys who build these pro, uh, protocols actually understand what they want and the, the underlying protocols do not give you this so first of all ask yourself your application that you're building do i need statelessness thus do i need to be scaled uh, horizontally do i need bi-directional communication because as far as i know it's very very hard to build a stateless application that is bi-directional communication. All right, I'll be surprised if someone built that. I'll, I'll actually love to know how do you build a stateless application, a chatting stateless application. It's a state, you, you have to store state somewhere. Unless you're constantly disconnecting and reconnecting the back end. I know, actually, the, I, I might actually check XMPP and see if that might be a stateless, who knows. 
But yeah, guys, uh, your backend, essentially, you have to evaluate what kind of protocols you need. And do you need statelessness? In this case, use HTTP or use UDP directly. UDP is very raw, right? I think we need a little bit another stateless protocol uh, that is essentially not as thick as HTTP, thick, <laughs> right? And uh, as as not as simple as DDP. I mean, HTTP two is getting better now, streams and whatnot. So, but that's good, right? But if you need a stateful protocol and and you need your your, your host to always go to the same machine, because and and I actually built a uh, built a game that. I want it to be stateful, right? You want statefulness, so all, every request goes to the same machine, stickiness, right? I mean, you can configure reverse proxies to be stateful and, and force HTTP requests to be stateful, right? This is against the semantic of the web, but what's, what's, what is anyway? <laughs> Everything is against these days. Nobody's following standards. But yeah, reverse proxies can be configured to route HTTP traffic to always the same machine based on hashes, based on certain values in the request. And the, the game I built was, uh, as actually I made a video about it, right? I wanted the, the participants of a certain game. So you, you want to create a game and certain people join the game, right? And I wanted all of these people to be in the same machine because I want to use this uh, memory structure in the host so that I don't ho go to a Redis cluster to ask for a state, right? I want the state to be in the host and the game state as the host. And if the if, if I'm I was okay if the server was destroyed, yeah, the game ends. I'm fine with that because the game lasts I don't think 30 seconds anyway. So that was a perfect example where I needed a stateful protocol. And uh, I used WebSockets for that, right? But whoops, even WebSocket is not really enough because reverse proxy will just load balance your, your, your request, right? Uh, to, to your, your WebSocket request to different hosts. You want given request, you want certain requests to go to certain hosts. And that's very difficult to build with WebSocket, but I think there is a way. But that's guys, that's it. I wanted to talk about how statefulness, how do you build stateful application or stateful protocol on top of stateless. That's easy, just store the state, right? And how do you build stateless protocol on top of stateful protocol? That's also easy. Just basically do not store anything at, at that layer, right? HTTP doesn't store anything. All right, guys, that's it for me today. Hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe for more backend topics. And I'm going to see you in the next one. Do I stay awesome? Goodbye.